get a meet to sign all sorts of stuff. But I, I really liked that moment. It was, it was a really nice moment. <laughs> they had no idea who I was, which was fantastic. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be another, yeah, another classic, classic moment there. Just the realisation slowly dawning and the paling of their faces. <laughs> yeah. I did want to, um, I'm sorry, I keep saying I've got these little, <laughs> you keep spurring these memories in mind because I, I went to the yeah. university in Lampeter. Right. Um, so that's you know obviously you know th- was thoroughly down there, and I drove home one day and ended up my car broke down, and it was um, near Artists Valley, you know just north of McCunthlach. If you if you know it's just around there, lovely area. Nope. Um, but I was stopped at a, pl- a petrol station. Now I was talking to what I thought was a greasy straggly biker, right. <laughs> and, he was, and he was very polite, saying how are you doing, you know what's the matter. So I told him about the bloody car again. You know we had this little conversation. Now, um, I went back to get my car, obviously, with the, with the farmer who took me, and we, we brought the car back to the garage, and that's when the garage owner says, do you realise who you were talking to? And I was like, no. But yeah, he was the lead singer of Led Zeppelin, and I just didn't know. Doing in North Wales? Sorry? What was he doing in North Wales? He lives, he lives in, um, Artis- he? Well, he, he had a house in Artists Valley, and right. Jimmy Page used to come to the pub sometimes in Lampeter. Right. And go there every now and then, not very often. Robert Plant, that's it. Robert Plant, right? yeah, yeah, Robert yeah, Plant, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, again, it was just a case of like I had no idea. I wasn't a huge rock fan. My friend in the car yeah. was, and he absolutely went mental when he found out. <laughs> but he comes down to sign CDs at the garage, and you know, every now and then, right. for people to yeah, just reminded me of that little story of yours. They'll probably now be fame. They'll think they're now, and they'll say, you know, Ross Hennessy has come. He's <laughs> he comes to our story. <laughs> He's a regular. <laughs> right, okay, moving on to the next one I've got now. How you've got such big fan base. Now I've got the ba- obviously things like the Bastard Executioner, even though it did get cancelled after season one, you've got Da Vinci's Demons, which is still ongoing, which you had a good character yeah. in. They're highly successful, and Game of Thrones goes without saying about the fan base there. How do you cope with all that many fans? Because there are, they've got you. Because you obviously go to conventions, sorry, I'm, you go to conventions yeah. and stuff, so how do you cope with all that? Um, I I do my best to connect with everyone that I talk to. Mm-hmm. I I'm kind of old school, as in I appreciate that the only reason why I have my job is because people want to watch us doing the job. And because um, now I'm in my 40s, so I've lost that arrogant youth thing that I used to have <laughs> when I was in my 20s. And I I make an effort to to um, befriend everybody who makes an effort to befriend me. Yeah. So even on my Facebook page. Uh, every morning I get up and I go to my birthdays list mm-hmm. and for anybody's birthday that is that day, I will take the time to send them a happy birthday um, from the Lord of Own. And so I take time to to make contact with my fans uh, and I find it really rewarding. Mm-hmm. I find it really rewarding. There, you know, there are some times when I put a post on Facebook to say I've got a big audition, everybody, you know, wish me well. And, yeah. and even when I posted a picture of my son, you know, I had over a thousand replies, oh, um, congratulations and stuff. So I find all that massively rewarding. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know it's not, uh, I know it's not anything um, that you should grab onto and live by, but, but I enjoy um, having um, a connection to people that want to watch and do and see things that I do. Yeah. That's fair enough. That's very nice. And I know you are, obviously, I've seen, I'm friends with you on Facebook, so I, I was one of those little comments as well, and you do. You see, you, it's nice to see. You know, you, you do reach out, and I, I you know, as a, someone as a fan, obviously myself, you, you see that happening, and you see that going out, and it does. It makes you feel more connected. So when you are in shows and when you are in future productions, you, you're guaranteed. You know, without it's not in a non-narcissistical way, you're guaranteeing that you're going to have support and that that friendship going further as you progress as well. Yeah, yeah. But I think it, but it, it, it's like it's a two-way game. Actors. Actors can't be actors if people won't watch them. Mm-hmm. So you need, you need to give the people that are giving you your job something back. I, I, I would find it um, – I mean, look at Tom Cruise. Tom yeah. Cruise can spend an hour and a half on a red carpet event <laughs> yeah. signing off before he goes in. I take my hat off to him for that. Oh, yeah. Because he could at, – at, at his position as an actor, he could easily just go, I'm not doing anything. You guys will watch me anyway. But he doesn't. He mm-hmm. gives it back to people that give it to him. Um, and, and I think – that level of friendship from actors to their fans and friends, um, I, I applaud. I really applaud him for that. And, and it, it's important to keep the business going. 
Definitely, definitely. I mean, I've got to say, I'm not going to name them because I'm, I'll get done for libel. But there's, there's, I know there's two <laughs> who I've <laughs> two actors <laughs> who well, actually, yeah, two <laughs> who um, I've spoken with. Uh, or I've actually not spoken with them. One was on Twitter, and a response I got when I was inviting him to come onto the show was, "I've got nothing." You know, I think he said, "Sure, sounds good." Then a few months later, after I, you know, he came back, I said, "We talked about it before." He goes, "Yeah, I've got nothing left to say." I think that everything, because I feel that every, I should be able to express myself enough through my acting for you to know about me. And that was it. He cut me off then completely. And someone else replied in defense of me. And he was like, I don't want to know. I've got nothing left to say. And I was like, well, that's kind of rude because it was quite very standoffish. So I've now actually gone off that guy. Um, the other one had arranged to, um, to get, arranged to come on a Skype call and we'd connected on Skype but he ignored three phone calls and ignored all my messages. And then the publicist turned around and said, we can't do it now. And I was like, right. but we had the time arranged. I spent two hours, two and a half hours sitting there waiting to, in case obviously was, something could come up. Didn't get an apology, didn't get nothing. I just got cut off after that and, and just blackwalled. And I thought, you know, I know people, you guys are busy, like you say, obviously trying to track you down when you run 15 hour working days, but... The, the, I think fans appreciate more the likes of yourself, where and, and those guys who do reach out and, and respect, yeah, yeah. you know, the people in the fans. I th- those two were just two really harsh examples of, of where think, it, the opposite way it works. I just think my mum brought me up correct, and she told me it's rude <laughs> to be impolite. You yeah. know, and I, if, if if they didn't want to do interviews, that's fine, but they should have just let you know that at the start rather than. Um, you know, rather than play a game, which seems a bit foolish, really. It is. I mean, you know, so two, I was sat for two. I mean, I don't make money on these. This is all for, you know, for, it's a hobby of mine because I really thoroughly enjoy talking to you guys um, and obviously have people listening. So, um, but yeah, when I when you sat like we are now, but just getting ignored, it was just like, you know, that's that's not really yeah. coming across as a nice kind of nice kind of person. And like you say, it's the way you get brought up, I think. and and yeah, yeah. you can definitely tell that with yourself. I mean, you've just, the, the, the friend, you know, I'm not being sycophantic, but the friendly demeanour that we've had since we've been chatting. Trust me, my mother would have bashed me silly if I was rude like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think mine would do as well. Yeah, good old British mothers. <laughs> Come with a slipper. <laughs> yeah. Cool, so moving on to the one that you've just finished filming. I think you've finished filming it now. Is Knights of the Damned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's just wrapped recently, hasn't it? Yeah. What character... Well, I know you can't talk much about it, probably, but what character do you play in Knights of the Damned? Right. Um, ben Lloyd Holmes, who is the producer um, and co-writer of it, he, he checked us out some rules about what we are <laughs> and are, are not allowed to play. Cool. He's coming um, on a Wednesday. So, so I'll, stick, I'll stick with his. You can tell him I stick to his rules. Um, basically, <laughs> Nights of the Damned I'm, it was one of the most hardest film shoots I've ever done because it was mm-hmm. intense, the shooting of it. But I think it's going to be one of the most rewarding. The, the genre, generally, if I had to sum it up, is kind of, think of um, Game of Thrones meets The Walking Dead. Okay. Okay, and that's kind of the genre. So, you know, you've got a, a couple of knights who are off trying to um, slay a dragon that's been attacking their city. Mm-hmm. And then when they return back, all of a sudden... There's some kind of um, undead, risen characters looming around the place, and they've got to work out what's going on. Right. And we've also got mermaids, and there's dragons. There's, it, it's a wonderful kind of fantasy adventure. Yeah. Um, and and the character that I played was a guy, a guy called Sir Richard, who's one of the knights who's been off for a year away from um, uh, away from the, the, the castle, trying to sort out why this dragon is suddenly attacking the whole of the kingdom. Okay. Um, and and it, it it was it was fun because. The way the part was written for Richard is he's he's a bit of a brute, mm-hmm. you know. He can't be doing with it, and and everything's too much like hard work. And when he gets bored of it, he punches it in the face. <laughs> and, uh, and it was just it was just it's a lot of fun. The writing of it is 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 excellent. There's a lot of humour, a lot mm-hmm. of boyish humour hidden within um, the storyline. So so I, I I would imagine anyone that's a fan of Game of Thrones, anyone that's a fan of The Walking Dead, yeah. will watch this. You go, oh my god, I can't wait for the next one. This is, you know, a, a great story. Fantastic. It's, it does sound great. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm friends with you and I'm friends with a few, like uh, Mark Zamet, Kate Davies as well. I mean, I've known them now for about a year. They came on a year ago. Um, and I keep seeing these behind the scenes photos and, 
And it just, it it does, it looks fantastic. I mean, it looks like they were a lot of the cast were gelled together and it was a lot of fun with the cast yeah. whilst in an intense environment, which I guess really kind of helps as well. Um, but yeah, you can see all these behind the scenes photos and it just looks, from what I've seen, it's just fantastical to, you know, to coming out. Well, when, when you're in the business a long time, you and you work in a certain genre. You know, I'm, I'm a certain type. I'm never going to be a Romeo. You know, it's not, not a Romeo. I'm always like the kind of Tybalt character and the warrior character. So you get cast in a certain genre, and then you start to meet more and more actors that work within your genre. And um, so Ben, I first met when we did Da Vinci's Demons. Mm-hmm. So I'd known him as Da Vinci's Demons. Yeah. Um, and another actor on there called Silvio Simak. I had worked on a sci-fi program called Leps right the way back in about 2002. Right. We shot it in the British Virgin Islands. Mm-hmm. Um, so automatically, out of the gang of us that were in the show, yeah. we already knew each other. Um, and then the other thing is when you're filming and you're doing 16, 17-hour filming days, mm. um, you just you have to cling on to any moments of reality that are around <laughs> you. So, so us like laughing at each other and making yeah. jokes with each other is, is, is how you get to those really long days. And that's where you get those really good um, clips and those little behind-the-scene moments all come up because – of that um, that natural release from the long filming stress. Oh yeah, exactly. You, you're you're all in it together, so you've got that joint feeling. You, you do. You have that joint stress, and you know. So yeah, you're right. Moments of levity, probably far and few between. But when they you lie, you work hard and you play hard. <laughs> actually, to be honest with you, the moments of levity were quite a lot. And Ben is actually <laughs> Ben. Ben's a really funny character. When you interview him, mm-hmm. um, he's got a real dry quirk. To him, he's he's a, he's, a, he's a great guy, and you'll you'll find he's he's, he's a very funny guy as well. So it was Excellent. Ben that was producing most of the humour on most of the film shoots. <laughs> well, that's all right then, because he was the boss. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> theoretically. Yeah. So if he starts it, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Oh no, that's brilliant. So I mean, yeah, um, I kind of covered all those questions. In, I had three questions like that. We covered all those about what it's like. Um, when's it going to come on? Do you know when it's going to be? When we can just get to see that? Do you know that? Um, yeah. I mean, it's in, I guess it's all the post-production stuff now, so it all depends on that. Yeah, it's, it's, in, it's in post-production. Um, ben um, has hinted that he would like to get it out um, sort of about uh, April or May next year. All right, cool. You see, that will depend on how fast the editors uh, and the special effects guys can put the dragons in, etc., and grade the film, etc. Yeah. So uh, ask Ben, he's the one who will know. But he, <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Have you got any other projects on the go at the moment? Um, I am just waiting to hear back on uh, an action film, which I can't talk too much about, but that film's next month. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I've just been inquired about a film shooting in Athens in next March. Oh, nice. So what, I've got two long-term um, projects. Uh, but in the meantime, I was, I mean, I was hoping to have a whole month off to be with my baby son. <laughs> And that was that was my that was my prayer, but and acting never goes to to how you want it to. Yeah. So my son was born last Monday. On Wednesday, I drove to London because I had the, the recall casting and to meet the American producer for this film. Yeah, I remember you saying. And then on Saturday, I had to go up and do a Comic Con appearance because I'd been booked. <laughs> so within the first week of my son's life, I've already been dragged away from the home twice, and that is very um, normal for actors. You, yeah. you, if you ever want to work as an actor. You should book yourself a holiday. <laughs> because the second you book it, somebody will want to use you for a film. Yep. <laughs> the Sod's Law. <laughs> Murphy's Law, even. Yeah. Oh, it's always Murphy's Law, yeah. Yeah. It's going to cut, yeah. No, that's, but it's still good, though, that you are busy um, and you are and you're getting that sort of, you know, the, getting the jobs, basically. I was going to mention the fact that do you get typecast because you are, you know, you're a solid, well built guy. So. Yeah. The, the, the irony of that is. When I left drama school back in um, oh, 1995, so that's about 20 odd years ago, mm-hmm. um, I, I wasn't a big guy. I just I started um, at the Royal Shakespeare Company and I ended up playing Ajax in Troilus and Cressida. Mm-hmm. And he had to be like a, a big warrior who could rival Achilles. And so I started going to the gym. And then what I found was there was a lack of actors in Britain that could um, carry the lines and have the stature to play right. a certain type of role. So I continued down, down that track. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's kind of morphed into who I am today. And yes, I am stereotyped. But to be fair, I bloody love doing these sort of films. <laughs> I love swinging swords. I like riding horses. Yeah. Um, and so I have a problem with being typecast. 
because mm. I guess I'm genuinely enjoying life. Fair enough. I was going to say, you know, what bloke, to be fair, 